Tech Talks, an innovative video series addressing treatment access issues and solutions for Canadians living with HIV and Hepatitis C. From April 10th to the 15th, CTAC attended the 22nd Annual Canadian Conference on HIV AIDS Research in Vancouver. And before I tell you about some of the amazing research we learned about at CAR 2013, I'd like to talk to you about the activities that CTAC undertook at the conference. We held an ancillary session called Drafting a Treatment Access Bill of Rights, where 30 people living with HIV and partners came together to drive the development of a new Bill of Rights on Treatment Access in Canada. We'll be working on this and you can check out our progress on our website over the summer months and we'll also be presenting the next steps on the Treatment Access Bill of Rights at our September conference. Also on our website you can see the posters that we presented at the conference, one on our co-infection program and the other on our GPO work. The study gave an important, deeper understanding of HIV-related health inequities faced by Indigenous peoples, and we hope to see this study expanded across Canada. The study also included a qualitative survey component, and from that we learned two crucial things about this particular population. The first was that over half of all respondents had experience throughout their childhood of being removed from their families of origin, either by child welfare agencies, by church officials, or through the tragedy of the residential school system in Canada. We also learned that over half of all respondents had experience with incarceration throughout their lives. The study gave an important, deeper understanding of HIV-related health inequities faced by Indigenous peoples, and we hope to see this study expanded across Canada. To learn more about this study, please visit allnationshope.ca. One of the most innovative studies that we saw was from Kathleen Deering's team at the BC Centre for Excellence, and that team is trying to figure out how spatial and environmental factors impact the sexual health and personal safety of sex workers in the downtown east side in Vancouver. And what that team's doing is that they're taking their data and relating it to a map that they've built of the neighbourhood, which includes roads and alleys, parks, lighting and building footprints. And what they're trying to do is research how spatial isolation, so doing sex work in poorly lit and isolated areas, how this is associated with women being less able to negotiate sexual health and specifically condom use with their clients. Now, we know that in this cohort, 70% of women exchange sex while they're high and 30% of women exchange sex for drugs. And we also know that only 9% of HIV positive women in the downtown east side are currently accessing treatment. So this research is really encouraging that we can build better interventions to improve the health of the most marginalized HIV positive women. My favorite two presentations were actually on the last day of the conference. The first one gave a bit of an update around something that we reported on the CPAC blog in March about how infants who contract HIV during childbirth may be able to be functionally cured of their HIV by being given treatment right away and then potentially stopping that treatment later. And the doctor who presented said that while this may be true, we need to keep in mind that we only know that this might be the case because the infant in Mississippi in question was actually taken out of care. It wasn't planned to stop the HIV treatment, and so we only kind of know this by accident. And there would be some profound ethical concerns for any physician to consider stopping HIV treatment, which we know works in managing HIV, and potentially putting another infant at risk of poor health outcomes in case it didn't work. This year's Red Ribbon Award, one of CAR's highest honors, was given to the Portland Hotel Society. Now, the Portland Hotel Society got its start by buying old, abandoned, single-room hotels in Vancouver's downtown east side and converting them to social housing facilities, putting roofs over the head of people with insecure housing. And over the years, they've expanded their work to go on and build low threshold clinics and they're probably best known for being the driving force behind Insight, the supervised consumption facility in the downtown east side. Now, the Portland Hotel Society's executive director gave a really amazing speech highlighting their integrated approach and showing how that, amongst many other changes in the neighborhood, have changed the game for people with insecure housing and people who use drugs who are now much more respected and valued with 
opportunities to contribute in their neighborhood. And being in that room really reminded me and I think everybody there of why we do the work we do. Paul touched on some of the results from the innovative social science research that was presented at CAR, including results from studies highlighting the health inequalities of HIV-positive Indigenous people and the role of environmental factors on the sexual well-being of women. But there was also some really interesting scientific research presented, including the progress for the search of an effective HIV vaccine, advances in antiretroviral treatment, and despite the hopeful momentum that was generated by the functionally cured Mississippi baby in early March, and the expectation of the cure as stated by Dr. Mark Weinberg at CAR, there continues to be scientific debate over whether or not we will in fact see the end of AIDS within the next 10 years. Also, the CTAC-led activity of drafting a treatment access bill of rights is an example of how we work in consultation with our stakeholders to develop tangible outcomes that are in line with our policy recommendations. Follow the evolution of this exercise or join us at our treatment access conference in September for the results. So that's CTAC Talks. Let's continue the conversation on the CTAC blog and join us in addressing treatment access issues for Canadians living with HIV